ready to hopefully help you secure that job that you are really hoping to get. So I would like to think that at this stage in my career, I am kind of good at interviews, so I've had many along the way, some successful, some not so successful, so I will be sharing the do's and don'ts behind interviews. So something about me, I'm currently a audit manager, so I started as an audit graduate within a big four firm about nearly four years ago now. I am here to help you hopefully do the same or just pass that interview that you have that's coming up and it doesn't have to be big four related, but this video will just throw in some tips for that specifically as well. So tip number one, it's gonna sound super obvious, but of course you need to nail the logistics. You can't get the job if you can't really get there or especially not even on time. Basically, just nail the logistics. Have a look at where the interview should be beforehand. Plan out your route. I would always kind of aim to get there to 15 minutes to half an hour early. And if you can, just find like a local Costa Coffee or Starbucks or something. And just grab yourself a drink and really calm your nerves. And just as long as you're in the area nearby, I think it does kind of help because then you're not rushing. You're not going to be flustered or overwhelmed. But I guess that's kind of in-person interviews. So a lot nowadays are actually online, so on Zoom. I guess the same kind of applies where you need to just make sure your laptop, everything's set up, all ready to go beforehand, maybe about 10, 15 minutes beforehand. And so I do have actually a bad story about this for me. So I was applying for an internal secondment. I'd passed the interview stage, which is good because I'm trying to give you tips on that. But where I was let down is a case study. So what actually happened for that was I ended up starting my laptop up. It was all ready, ready to go. I had about five, 10 minutes. I was just you know, getting changed in the last bits. And then um, my laptop decided to do an update, which was not fun. And I don't know why I clicked it, but I did. And it was just a big mess. Like I tried to email them off my phone and sort it out. It was internal, so it wasn't too bad, but it just, it kind of then had me flustered for the whole thing and just paranoid and things. So it does just really go to show that it just helps your mental state if you are nailing the logistics from the very start. So by the way, that internal secondment was to transaction services. And if you're interested in that area as part of the big four, I do have a PDF that's available. Link is in the description below. And you'll be able to find out all of my notes and research that I did to find out about the job. And like I said, I was successful in that interview. So it should be able to help. Throwing in another thing here about travel. So something that usually is a bit of a sticky topic is travel reimbursement. So again, this is if it's in person. And I personally will probably just wait until after you find out the results of the interview to ask. That's just what I think, but it's up to you on that one. Tip two, dress to impress. So firstly, you need to get there, but then you need to actually show up and look somewhat presentable. So people naturally think an interview you should just be dressed smart, but I personally think you should be dressing for the role. So whether that is the full outfit or if it's just halfway up because you're on Zoom, I think do just make sure you do look as professional as you can or as fitting for the role. So it does actually take apparently seven seconds to make a first impression. I mean, you've probably already got one of me now. Don't want to hear what it is. But it just goes to show you should kind of dress how you want to be perceived. This is an area you, of course, just really want to make sure you can get right because, again, you don't want it to impact anything negatively. So in terms of a big four interview, I would definitely say to kind of dress in smart wear. So it doesn't need to be too over the top. It can be a bit more kind of chill, but still pretty much smart. I guess these interviews at a big four, they're usually with senior managers or partners. And these people will essentially be looking for whether you are someone they can put comfortably in front of their clients. So that's definitely something to bear in mind when you're thinking about choosing your outfit. So next, and hopefully probably the most important part of this video, is about interview preparation and answer practice. So before I touch on actually the different types of interviews, so scenario-based or competency-based, what I do want to firstly say is that probably one of the most important questions that you are likely to get asked is why you want to work at that specific company. So for a lot of interviews that I've had actually, I think maybe the majority, even the big four interview, this definitely did get asked, so why that specific company? And this part of the question is something you can definitely prepare for. And it also just goes to show how much research you've put in and how passionate you actually are. Really make sure to put the time into this one. 
So to help actually guide you with this, I have got some points that you can cover. And I'll pull up the full blog here and what you'll be able to see is where I've picked an area and then gone into a lot of detail and made it specific to a big four firm. So the full blog can be found in the description below if you do just want to go through these in your own time. But essentially the key areas are say the unique selling point for that company, the size of the company and how many employees it has, whether there's any international presence, whether they've got awards or their values and if they align with yours. There's also corporate responsibility and sustainability, even the culture, news articles, training and development, progression. There's honestly just so many different things that you can touch on. So definitely do check that out in the full blog. I won't go into it too much in this video, but really you do need to make sure you are doing your research to just really show why you want to work for that firm. And if you do really do your research, what it will help with is actually if they ask you, for example, why you don't want to work for their competitor firms, then you can really highlight and draw on some of those key things specific to them, such as any awards that stand out to you. Or for example, if the progression's potentially quicker at this firm that you're applying to, just things like that, that'll really help. So there's clearly a lot you can say here then if you do do that research. And I often found that sometimes I'm just talking for quite a long time because I'm trying to get it all out, but you just don't want to seem like it's too rehearsed. So what I typically do is just write the things down in a bullet point list think of what the main ones are and then try to get other kind of areas from all over and just throw it in but definitely get my most important points out first doing it in a bullet point way kind of helps your memory rather than thinking i need to say it word for word because that probably just won't go well and when you get mind blank you will probably panic it's of course then fine if you miss them out and that's on the basis that you've already got quite a few points and they're quite diverse so just get it out, make it as concise as possible, just straight to the point. More to say is probably better here than less and do just try and make your answers just as specific to you as possible. The next question, I'd be so surprised if you weren't asked, but it is why that role and what the expectations are for that role. So again, this is something that I was asked in my Big Four interview, if I remember correctly. And this is a question, again, you wanna prepare for and you want to nail. This will really show your passion and interest for the job and make you show that you again have done your research. Bringing in another example of a don't, I had a job interview, I didn't really know honestly what it was that I was applying to, it was something to do with trading, um, honestly I'm not sure, and in the interview they said well what do you think this role is, and it was so obvious I just Honestly, I just couldn't really figure it out beforehand and I was quite confused and it really just did go to show, hence I'm probably asking me the question like that. And I was like, oh, I don't know, I think I'll just be really good at it, which is <laughs> such a bad answer. And I obviously did not get that job, but that just goes to show why it's so important to make sure that you do do the research on the job itself. So when covering the role, I think it's really important to know the following. So firstly, what skills are required in the job and that will actually really help you prepare for the competency-based questions if it is that type of interview. Next, you also need to understand the day-to-day -day of the role. So if you are working or hoping to work in external audit, check this video out. And I've really gone into detail for a graduate new joiner as to what to expect. Thirdly, it of course helps that you are aware of any professional qualifications that may be required in the role. And then finally, if you are kind of applying to any graduate schemes or things like that, it is important to just know that full structure and just what you'd be getting yourself into. So really understanding those aspects will help you just shine through your interview and it really will go to show that you know what you're applying for. So I wouldn't just kind of list things up and say, this is what it'll be, this is what the role will be. I think you should always try and link it back to yourself as well. So a top tip that I have is when you're talking about the skills in the job, then bring it back to yourself and say that those are skills that you possess or those are the things that you enjoy and that's what really attracts you to the role. Doing things like that I think will just automatically kind of improve your answer. If you're really excited then for example about client facing work or teamwork, definitely do just say that. That's something that I think is really good about audit and it is something that you should then mention in the interview if that same thing applies to you. Really make the links here and go to show why you're interested in that specific role. If you want the ACA qualification, you want to keep learning, do just say that, it really does help. So I do just want to say here though, the interview is not expecting you to know everything about this job, especially if it's a graduate role where they take anyone from any background like an audit. So what you do just need to try to do is show that you do have that genuine interest. Finding out about the full scheme as well, what really helps about knowing that is if they ask you where do you want to be in five years time, 
it's good to just know in the back of your mind where that role will take you in five years. So now we can come on to the different types of interviews, so the scenario based or the competency based. So I think actually that my Big Four interview is more of the competency base. So this is where they ask you about specific skills that you have that are also needed for the job. So it'll say, for example, show me a time where you've, you know, shown really good leadership. So other things for audit, I'd probably expect maybe it's like teamwork, communication, time management, analytical skills, just things that are relevant for the job. So the best way I would personally approach these questions to kind of practice and prepare for is just list out all of your past experiences. So this is both academic and non-academic. From that list then, go and break it down into the different skills. So rather than it being, I did this and it included these skills, do try and think of really specific scenarios within there that really highlighted a certain type of skill. So having these examples in your head, hopefully they can touch on a few skills for the same kind of thing, where what you can then do is just think flexibly and just adapt your answers where needed. But that being said, I really want to highlight not to try and use the same example throughout. If you're constantly going back to the same thing, it's not really showing too much of a full 360 kind of view of you. So it is best to do as many scenarios as you can, but kind of keep it as specific as possible. It's also then, of course, important not to kind of lie or exaggerate too much because, of course, cracks will start to show if you are asked those probing questions. So briefly touching on then scenario based, these are the ones that are more hypothetical. So what would you do in this situation? These are personally trickier to prepare for. So I think just take the time to really think about what the questions are asking and then feel free to just answer. So you don't need to just rush into an answer. Do definitely think it through. So it helps, I guess, to think back to the firm's values as well. If the scenario, for example, is talking about doing something unethical and one of the firm's core values is integrity, then of course you do want to do the right thing in that scenario. So the next tip it might not be applicable to all interviews, but my big four interview, for example, it actually involved a presentation element. So that was an extra bit to prepare for. So I don't really know if they still do this in the interviews now, but it probably helps just to just talk about it just in case. So they did give us a question beforehand and we'd have to prepare and then take an interview and then take a presentation in with us to of course present to the partner. So I think what really helps is just speaking to others who have been through the process and see if they've got any kind of more helpful tips and advice. LinkedIn and the internet is just so much more powerful than you probably even think. But yeah, of course, then key tips here is just make sure you definitely prepare for this. Just stick to the brief to a T. Don't start going off on tangents and bringing other things in. Try and, of course, make the presentation fit the format of the firm. So if they're quite a professional firm, then, of course, you need to make your presentation fit in with that. So mine for a big full firm was quite professional. I did it on PowerPoint. It was a pretty standard presentation. So I didn't really know how it would run too much. So I printed it out. I also took my USB and I had also emailed it as backup as well. So in the end, it was honestly just a one-to-one -one presentation, just sat down. It was a bit more chilled out than I thought it would be actually. So using the printouts went best here. So another big preparation element of the interview is commercial awareness. I honestly used to always dread this part of an interview. It's where you need to make sure that you can show that you are just staying up to date on the news and recent trends. So of course, do your research beforehand because you could be asked, for example, what current challenges the industry is facing. So I don't really think this was touched on too much in my interview, but it of course does just help just in case you are asked. So if you are applying to external audit, for example, then independence is a huge issue. And you can also look into audit quality as well. My next tip is literally get comfortable and be yourself. So my big four interview, it was quite pleasant, actually. It was more of a conversation. I really just adapted to the interviewer's style. So he was kind of more laid back, just trying to get to know me as a person. And that was really nice. So I think if I was quite, you know, uncomfortable and just more formal and not really adapting, it would have been harder to have that kind of conversation and build that rapport. I think it's therefore just important to really adapt to them and just also be yourself. So being yourself is one of the biggest tips that I can give you. And it sounds really obvious, but sometimes it's harder to do that when nerves are involved. But just think about it, you've already done the hard part to get to that final interview. Sometimes as well, it is a bit unnatural to kind of blow your own trumpet, but 
this is the time you do just need to do it but also let your personality just shine through with it like i said they want someone that they'd be able to for example in a big four role such as audit to put in front of the client and they also actually want someone who will fit in with their current team so personally i just think you'll tick this box and fit in more and connect with the interviewer if you do kind of just be yourself tip seven water is your friend I don't know why I just made you watch me drink water, but honestly, it is your friend. I previously mentioned that sometimes you need to just take the time, think about what the question's asking you before you answer. And naturally, it becomes quite awkward very quickly if someone's just staring at you, waiting for an answer, and you're just completely silent. This is where I think you have a few options. So firstly, you could ask them to repeat the question to just get yourself more time. You could then actually just ask them for a moment to think, which would of course be then less awkward. Or I think what helps is just taking a big sip of water before you go in to answer. So I think it kind of depends how long you think it will take for the answer to kind of come to you. But even drinking water during kind of helps you collect your thoughts and come back to the question if you find yourself going off on a tangent. It does just make sure then that you aren't missing those important things that you definitely want to get across in your answer. And like I said, I think water does just definitely help with any awkward pauses. Okay, that was still so awkward. <laughs> but hopefully you get the point. Right, next bit interview notes and whether you should have them or not to hand so when you're answering why that firm or why the role i think it's really tempting to want to have them i personally would probably avoid trying to even start reading off them just because you could end up with nerves becoming really over reliant on them so this of course probably isn't going to give that good impression and you'll make less eye contact with the interviewer and it probably seems like you actually know less than you do I think if you do want the notes, it's nice to just kind of have them like on the side where you're not really looking at them, but they're there just so you can glance over or have as maybe just a real comfort blanket. If you are going to do that though, definitely do kind of just have bullet points on them or really key points just so you could just pick out the main thing. So full sentences, you'll probably start to read, but if you've just got shorter key points, it'll just be prompts to then help you remember to just talk about specific things. So that just means you won't rely on notes for the entire thing. So now if you're coming to the end of all that preparation and all those practice questions that you've put together, what really helps here is mock interviews. So I definitely ran through some mock interviews before my big four interview. And that was with my sister just kind of going through and asking her to ask me the question, why that specific firm or why the role? She did also kind of throw in some potential competency-based questions too. So I personally think this part is vital and that's just because you'll find out whether the, all that research and things that you've done have actually sank in or not. I also found actually that some of my answers were quite long and they just needed to be brushed up and made much more concise. And I think what also helps doing this is that it just goes to show that your answers don't need to be completely rehearsed and they're not going to be completely perfect but what they will be is a bit more natural and realistic. So if I'm being actually completely honest here, I did actually have another Big Four interview so for a different firm so not the one that I currently work at of course and that one I actually thought it went well but feedback I did actually get is that I was going off on tangents sometimes and so what really helps then is well what would have helped if I had done more mock interviews for that so now let's talk about the other resources out there so this is one definitely watching this video and I hope it does help so do drop comments and likes if it does but here's one that I've already touched on and that is of course the internet and LinkedIn reach out for people in your network it could definitely help and also people who aren't in it yet but you'll be surprised at how many people are actually willing to help another resource that i haven't mentioned yet but i think is really helpful especially when applying for graduate roles is actually the student room and that helped me a lot so a lot of students who are in the same position they're actually sharing a lot of information and sometimes i'm thinking is this actually allowed? So don't expect the questions that they get asked to be the exact ones that you get asked, but it helps to just have those to prepare for so you know that you're on the right track. The final part I think you should think about before going into that interview is that last part of the interview where they say, oh, have you got any questions for me? Is there anything you'd like to ask? So I'd definitely avoid at this point talking about salary and things like that. I think it's still a really good opportunity now for you to try and connect with your interviewer. So my actual personal favourite question that I would always ask is about their experiences and whether they enjoy their role. So you could ask them what they find is the most enjoyable part about their job or what they like about working for that firm. So I just feel that people do love kind of talking about this stuff. 
You could also actually think about something that you've discussed earlier in the interview that they might have briefly touched on that you didn't really know much about at the time, but you want to kind of find out a bit more. So say they mentioned perhaps international travel that they did, then it's a good point to say, oh, you mentioned this earlier. Can you tell me a bit more about that? This shows that you are really listening and having a genuine interest in them. So another route you could go down is asking for their opinion on certain things going on in the industry. So it's honestly up to you kind of which route you go down and what you ask, but I think it does help to kind of ask a question rather than nothing at all. So I've definitely covered a lot in this video. It's a lot of information to go away and process. So I think do check the blog out as well because it's there for you to just take away. So big thought interview or not, I do just wanna really congratulate you for getting to this final stage of the interview. It's a great achievement and I do really wanna wish you good luck for your interview. So if you did find this helpful, do give me a thumbs up. Any questions, drop them below in the comment box. I'd be happy to answer. And do make sure to subscribe and hopefully you'll see me again soon. Thank you.